England on the right and Alistair Dick of Scotland who's also 18 on the left. Alan Brazil is injured and Spurs expect to hear early next week whether Jasper Olsen will be joining them from Ajax. Luton can't afford him so they bring back their foreign import Raddy Antish as a sweeper in a system which sees Clive Goodyear given his first game of the season in defence. Trevor Aylott is back in attack but injury still rules out Brian Horton, David Moss and Frank Bunn. Referee this afternoon, Maurice Robinson from Sutton Coalfield. Only one point separates Luton, who are fifth, from Spurs, who are seventh. So a lot hinging on this match, and Matt Steen with an early shot. Crisp November afternoon. Danny Thomas to Hoddle. Looks as though Donaghy has gone to Mark Hoddle in the midfield. That's Cook on the right, the lad making his first appearance. Thomas again. Falco is in the centre. And that was very close. And the header by Falco, the anger on the face of the goalkeeper, Les Seeley, suggesting that he felt with some justification that Falco should have been better marked. Aylott and Gary Stevens, And now Hoddle and again Donaghy very quickly to him and Hoddle beats him. And slips the ball to Perryman and gets a return. Promising by Spurs and Hoddle. Ali Dick. Hewton. Gary Stevens coming forward. Number five. But the momentum slightly lost by Tottenham there. Roberts. Oh, Kirk Stevens handball, penalty. There seemed no danger as Falco contested, but the ball struck Kirk Stevens. He may argue about the intent. Referee didn't hesitate. Penalty to Tottenham. So, Les Seeley has to face Glenn Hoddle who scored on this ground last season and hits the post this time and Cook gets the ball back and the fans cheering but it was a well taken penalty in the sense that it gave the goalkeeper no chance at all but it hit the post and came away to safety from the Luton point of view A lot. Hill trying to go through the lot. Got caught in the sandwich. Ricky Hill, Gary Stevens on one side and Hewton on the other. Free kick to Luton. And if Tottenham have got Hoddle on these set plays, Luton have Antiche, who's also skillful from this range. And a posse of players waiting to come in from the far side as well. And that was Antish, Clements didn't get there, Donaghy, Clements, a lot. Well, as a goalkeeper, you have to be very alert. The first shot, he only blocked and didn't hold from Antish. But Donaghy came in thinking he was going to finish it off. Clements was there again, a lot over the bar. Falco. Turner. He's given it straight to Archibald. And good save, Seely. Falco off the line. And Perryman blocked by Elliott. Perryman again. And driven again. It's in the net by Cook. He scored on his debut. Well, what drama there. A terrible mistake by Wayne Turner. Put in Archibald. Seely did brilliantly. Falco followed up, off the line, it was so close there, but finally, 
18 years old Richard Cook, who didn't know he was playing until 9 o'clock this morning, scores the opening goal in his first... can Luton reply immediately it's been that sort of match end to end and now Cook's got to go back and do some defending that's what life's about at this level Steen curls it in and Steen again from Antiche not given Perryman the man who seemed to bring him down Perryman may argue he was going for the ball, but the referee certainly took his side of that argument and Luke only had a corner. And that's too long even for Donaghy, who was the last man coming in on it. a good bit of work by Dick to Hoddle and Archibald's in the middle, offside Dick Hoddle, chance maybe for Archibald to get away on the right here Hoddle again Hook is now on the right wing, here's Thomas. And the referee blows for half-time, with Spurs leading by one goal to nil. Full of incident, Glenn Hoddle hitting the post from a penalty kick early in the game. But Spurs still going ahead, thanks to 18-year-old Richard Cook in his first appearance in the senior side. We may be out of the European Championship, but English League football still attracts tremendous interest on the continent. This match is being seen live in Scandinavia, and highlights will also be shown in Holland. Richard Cook's goal was actually Spurs 14th away from home in the first division this season. And would you believe they only managed 15 away from home in their entire first division programme last season. So there's been an improvement there, and either their attitude or their finishing away from White Hart Lane and here they are on the attack in the second half a corner Chris Hewton who made the run and it was Kirk Stevens who blocked the cross so it'll be Ali Dick with the corner Back in by Roberts, miss kick by Aylott. There's Perryman. Spurs haven't lost away from home in the first division since the opening day of the season. And Luton have not been beaten here at Kenilworth Road in the league, so one record or the other, may have to go. In by Hoddle, and the touch there was by Falco, who's having his best run in the Spurs first team, I would think of his career, he's figured in every game this season, and is making a determined effort to keep out international stars. Gary Stevens covering for Graham Roberts, now Hewton, Dick, Oh. Perryman for Spurs Archibald and Antish for Luton Hill oh. play on says the referee you've got the ball good decision Donaghy Walsh Turner Steen, 
Hill, Walsh, no! The equaliser looked on. Steen got the header back. Ricky Hill seemed to have the best chance, didn't take it, and Walsh didn't get hold of his shot either properly, and it went almost in slow motion past the post. Oh, well played, Hill. Stevens moving up from right back. And going all the way, Kurt Stevens, and Clements was too. Penalty. Penalty. Ray Clements looks astounded, but the referee has said penalty kick. Kurt Stevens, who gave away the penalty in the first half, suddenly finds that fortune turns full circle. He made the break. He was challenged partly by Ali Dick, but mainly by Clements, went down, and now Luton have a penalty. Clements is still protesting. And Clements got a hand to it onto the post. Donaghy, what a great save. Unbelievable stuff here. Two penalties have been missed, but that wasn't a miss. That was fantastic goalkeeping by the man who's played 61 times for England. Steen is entitled to say, what have you got to do? Little tussle in midfield between Hoddle and Antiche. Referee needing now to keep things a little bit calmer as Archibald makes the run and gets away from Goodyear and scores. Was that a foul or not? Wayne Turner, the last man, appealed, but it was too late. Archibald was away from both of them and finished brilliantly. And it's 2-0 to Spurs after 59 minutes and Archibald has now scored 12 goals in the last 14 games. What a turnaround. One moment, Clement saves a penalty. The next minute, Archibald makes it 2-0 at the other end. And Luton, whatever else you say, don't deserve to be two down. Aylott, Hill, Steen. Antich was fouled by Hoddle. And here's Steen. Oh, yes. Beautifully taken. Quick thinking by Luton. A brilliant free kick by Antich, actually, who saw what was on before anybody else on the field apart from Steen. He just drilled that ball in low, the Yugoslav and Steen in his stride, finished in style. Luton deserve a goal at least. They're back to 2-1 after 64 minutes. And here comes Cook. And if he'd squared that, Archibald was in the clear. Offside, Aylott. Roberts with the kick. Falco with the flick on. Archibald turning Goodyear. Yes! 3-1 to Tottenham and Archibald these days can do nothing wrong in front of goal. 72 minutes gone and Archibald, he foxed Goodyear again there. Turning him beautifully and finding the corner of the net. And... Archibald's current record, he's still not talking to the manager, by the way, Keith Birkinshaw. That field is still lying beneath the surface. But in the space of, what, 14 matches, Archibald coming in again here has scored 13 goals. Walsh. Kirk Stevens, Ricky Hill. And Stevens is up again. And Walsh! And Kirk 
Mark Stevens playing his 200th full league match for Luton has had quite an afternoon he gave away a penalty he collected a penalty and with that run he lays on the second goal for Luton it was a lovely cross and all Walsh had to do was get on the end of it have been given and taken in good part Hoddle that's a terrific ball for Archibald if he could bring it down Goodyear relieved that he couldn't Haylott well played by Chris Hilton who threatens to go all the way is this the hat-trick for Archibald hits the post Hilton Archibald appeared to be on for his hat-trick, beat the goalkeeper, hit the post. So it's still 3-2. Archibald's flick. Hill. John McGee. Oh, he caught Turner coming forward. And the tussle was between Turner and Perryman. Falco looks for Archibald and Dick's in a good position here. It's Alistair Dick and it's 4-2. So both the 18-year-olds have scored and it would appear to have sealed Tottenham's victory. Falco on the right. Archibald up there with space to work the ball and when Alistair Dick was put through he made no mistake just a couple of minutes left of normal time and Spurs for the third time in the match have a two goal margin in their favour Kirk Stevens forward and it's now fairly comfortable for Spurs as they improve on their winning run but the real hero for them possibly was Ray Clements because his two vital saves from Donaghy in the first half and the penalty by Steen in the second came at vital times Spurs were able to extend their lead again and eventually ran out winners by four goals to two in a match which was an immense credit not just to the two teams 